very impressed by uh, Japanese women. And I met both the current and former members of parliament, some former mini female ministers, and uh, they're very, very impressive. I think uh, it's not only in politics, but in all the spheres. Um, and especially, also, I think it's very important to bring up children uh, in the right way. And I think we need to learn a lot of things from that as well. I think uh, Prime Minister Abe's policy to advance women's agenda, I think, is very applaudable. And uh, like with any issue, I think two things are always very important. One is political will, and one is the public attitude, or change of the public attitude. So I think um, not only in Mongolia, not only in Japan, but around the world, and in our region, I think it's very important for both men and women to change our attitude towards the gender equality issues. Um, it's, I think, a very long-seated, maybe hundred thousands of years old attitude and mentality, and it takes some time to change, and unless we change the mentality, it's very difficult, you know, to advance. And I think on the other side, I think um, leaders like Abe, who has this political will to push the issue, also helps a lot with the big signal. So if both political will and the public attitude, changing of the attitude is combined, um, there is um, a big uh, chance to succeed. And I think we have to understand that this issue of advancement of women and generally gender equality is at the end of the day good for the society as a whole. It's not just the issue of women or the issue of men, it's just the uh, good for the progress of the society as a whole and for both men and women. So. I think that's uh, the most important thing is to change our mentality and attitude towards this. The main problem that I encountered being a politician, especially women politician, I think generally in politics uh, is, um, I feel, ignorance and lack of trust. Uh, so I think many people, just because there is not enough information or means of information, lack of knowledge and understanding about the issues, uh, often wrong decisions are made or wrong impression and opinions from the public and both from the politicians come and I think that's, um, I think the sad thing that decisions are not based, uh, they're based on um, malinformation or misinformation. The other thing is trust. T on one side, there is a lot of transparency, information, every bit, everything is opening up, you know, but at the same time, um, there is less and less trust, both in politicians, in government, even a uh, lack of trust in, you know, business leaders. And, and that's why I think it's very important to create a trust. And I've been trying to um, always um, be a leader that, of course, not naively, but puts trust in people that I work with. And I always want to try to see things from the positive side and not from the negative. Be more constructive rather than destructive. I have to overcome that. And um, one just becomes more careful, but I think, uh, Trust bri uh, builds bridges, and this trust destroys everything. I if there is no trust in the, uh, in the organization, or in especially in politics, it's very difficult. I, I used to be a geologist, and I worked um, in the field uh, quite often. And for, uh, for a geologist, being with the nature and working with, you know, especially in Mongolia with nomadic, being in touch with nomadic herders and with our geologists, it used uh, it it used to be very <coughs> um, simple, I would say bright colors if you look at the spectrum of life. Uh, whereas being a, in politics, it's a huge spectrum of colors from very dark to very bright and interesting colors. So uh, it's, um, 
one just has becomes a bit more skeptical, but uh, it doesn't mean that you need uh, to lose trust, you see. I think that's, uh, that, um, I always think that uh, that's the most important things for positive success. Well, Mongolia and Japan has been enjoying a uh, very good relationship, not only in the political diplomatic uh, arena, but also uh, economics and uh, between the citizen and uh, for between non-government organizations, culture and ex cultural exchanges. So um, we're very lucky to have a, this very good partner as Japan. And although we only have two big neighbors, China and Russia, we consider Japan uh, as a third neighbor, which means we want to keep very good relations, as good as with the neighbors. And uh, we have, with the only a few countries, we have a strategic partnership. So we have strategic partnership relationship with Japan. And I'm very happy to say that last week our prime minister and uh, Japanese prime minister signed economic partnership agreement and our parliament just approved as of yesterday. So uh, we hope that more economic and investment and trade opportunities will follow it up. And um, uh, the future relationship looks um, even better, I think. So we uh, like to think that Mongolia as a green civilization traditionally, because nomadic herders have lived for generations uh, in the nature and they, um, they more or less know how to you know, um, protect and live in harmony with the nature. So I think the traditional uh, family education is all also very much environmental education as well. For example, you are not supposed to uh, put dirty things into water. Even if you make a small hole in the ground, um, where, where you, st you stay when you move, because it's a no semi-nomadic culture, you move from one place to another, then you have, you're supposed to rehabilitate and close the hole, even if it's a small one. And it's a very much recycling society, because um, as a nomadic herder, you use almost everything. You have, if you have a sheep, of course you use its s wool for the clothing, you use the sheep's skin, you also use dung for uh, burning, cooking, and even uh, for the winter um, livestock uh, fence, you use dung as a floor and even as a walls as well. You see, so it's very much sort of recycling, uh, environmentally friendly society. And of course, current, very modern, clean, high-tech technologies, uh, green technologies are very important. But I think we also need to learn from the traditional environmental conservation knowledge and combine them to go fo forward in the right way. So uh, I think, for example, our bilateral relationship agreement with Japan, Mongolia, Japan on low, low carbon development, it's called uh, bilateral offset crediting mechanism or JCM, which we signed uh, a couple of years ago. It's very important to try to introduce Japanese high uh, clean technology into Mongolia. At the same time, we can also offer our traditional knowledge of how uh, nomadic herders could live in harmony with the nature and not create too much waste as well. Well, I'm very impressed with um, what Sasakawa Peace Foundation and um, generally uh, Nippon Foundation and Sasakawa Related Foundation have been doing for both um, promoting mutual understanding between the countries, but also uh, uh, undertaking a lot of things in, uh, on the humanitarian grounds as well. So I think it's very, very important now uh, for the whole world and for the countries and for the regions to think how more into the future, and that is, the main challenge for the Earth 
will be how to sustain um, the ever-growing population numbers, which follows with ever-growing demand for energy, resources, water, and uh, if we go the same path, you know, more consumption, more production, uh, more greenhouse gases, then we uh, may end up needing more planets than the current planet. So I think it's very important to uh, concentrate also on sustainability issues uh, and especially educate young generation, the new generation, uh, how to have what's called sustainable development or sustainable um, way of life. And that is, you know, do we need to consume so much? Uh, do we need to produce so much? And the Earth, uh, the planetary, we are living beyond the planetary boundaries. And unless we change our attitude and, um, you know, and uh, unless um, the, there is more sustainable consumption and production and fighting against climate change, it will be very difficult, even for this coming generation and for the next generation, uh, to live in a safe world. So it's not only environment issue, it's also becoming security issue, climate change and the uh, living within the planetary boundaries. So I think everybody has to contribute to this very important issue of sustainable development. Thank you.